Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Nothing About You Says Computer Technology, a podcast about cybersecurity and data privacy viewed through the lens of diverse voices. Today we'll be talking about cybersecurity in the news, and we also have some Protect Your Neck news. Next, we will discuss the Supreme Court's decision in Van Buren versus United States. And then finally, we'll be handing out a cybersecurity award. I'm your host, Anthony, a cybersecurity, data privacy, and regulatory attorney based in Oklahoma City. While I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer, and this podcast should not be considered legal advice. Instead, think of this as a conversation between two friends. But if you need legal advice, please, please, please find a local attorney that can help you. So let's turn our attention to some news stories. Our first story comes from the New York Times. A group of criminal hackers that are believed to have ties with the Chinese government breached the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority's computer system in April of this year. According to reports from MTA regarding the breach, the criminals did not gain access to the systems that control the train cars, and no riders were put at risk. What was interesting about this breach is that the attack on the MTA did not involve a demand for money. Instead, it appears to be an intrusion to gain information. Of course, the Chinese government is denying any involvement in the breach. Our next story comes from NBC News. At least two TV news stations have been offline since Thursday of last week in what experts believe to be a ransomware attack on their parent company. NBC reports that ABC affiliate in Orlando and an ABC affiliate in Pittsburgh were victims of the attack. Both of these stations are owned by Cox Media Group. While Cox Media Group has not confirmed that this has been a ransomware attack, experts interviewed by NBC believe it is a ransomware attack because incidents that impact multiple organizations within a company are typically ransomware attacks. Our final story comes from the Washington Post. The Department of Justice has seized two websites that Russian hackers use when impersonating the U.S. Agency for International Development. The hackers would send emails pretending to be from USAID with malicious attachments. The criminals would then use these two websites to infect the computers of victims who viewed the malicious attachments. We also have some Protect Your Neck news. During this segment, we'll be talking about current scams you should be aware of and other vulnerabilities that you need to address. Think of this as Patch Tuesday and a cybersecurity incident report rolled all into one. FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority that regulates the brokerage industry, has noticed an increase in account takeovers. This is where bad actors take over customers' accounts using login credentials found from other data breaches to gain access to customers' online brokerage accounts. FINRA suggests that people use two-factor authentication and don't recycle their passwords. Our next piece of Protect Your Neck news comes from Cyware. According to researchers at Proofpoint, they have identified a scam involving the fake movie streaming service Bravo Movies. So what exactly is happening? People are getting emails from this fake streaming service stating that people will be charged if they don't cancel their subscription. The email provides a number for people to call to cancel their service. After calling, the scammers direct their victims to a website where they download malicious software that installs Bizarre Loader, creating a backdoor for other malicious software to be downloaded. So please, please, please stay safe out there. Or as the Wu-Tang Clan tells us, watch your step, kid and protect your neck. Our main topic today is the recent Supreme Court decision in Van Buren versus United States. You may recall that we talked about this case on a previous episode after the Supreme Court heard oral arguments. But let me give you a quick refresher. This is a case involving the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Van Buren is a former police officer in Georgia. The FBI had set up a sting operation and an informant offered Van Buren $5,000 to look up a woman's license plate number in the police database. This was a violation of the police department's rules and policies. Federal prosecutors brought charges against Van Buren for a violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. 
alleging that Van Buren exceeded his access to the police department's computer system. Van Buren argued that while he may have violated the department's policies, he had access to the system and did not exceed his authority. In a 6-3 decision, ruling in favor of Van Buren, the Supreme Court outlined that it backed a gate-up or down approach to authorization. Accessing part of a expressly forbidden system breaks the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act rules. But simply accessing authorized areas in an unapproved way does not. The government's approach when viewing the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act would make things like violating companies' policies by sending personal emails, using your work computer, a potential violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. The Van Buren decision isn't a free pass for people who do things that violates companies' policies. Instead, it raises the bar for criminal liability. Justice Thomas, Chief Justice Roberts, and Justice Alito wrote a dissent where they argued that there are other areas in the law where courts have punished those that exceed the scope of consent. The dissent uses an example of a valet driver that takes possession of your car so that they can park it for you. But that same valet couldn't just take your car and go for a joyride. While this is a criminal case, the rule will guide civil claims under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. We will be following the implications of this case closely. Our final segment today is our Cybersecurity Awards. This week, I have one award I want to hand out, and it's the Crime Mob Nuck If You Buck Award. If you've been in the club in the southern region of the United States in the last two decades, you've heard this 2004 song. When the song is played, it gets the crowd hyped and excited. This week's award goes to President Biden, who will be meeting with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, to discuss, among other things, ransomware. Previous U.S. officials have tried to press the Russian government regarding cyber attacks. The Washington Post has reported that the president will take a hardline approach against the Russian president to address ransomware. I hope the president listens to Crime Mob Song to get prepared for that summit. Thank you so much for joining us today on Nothing About You Says Computer Technology. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify. You can also visit the show's website at nothingaboutyou.com. I'm your host, Anthony, and I'll see everyone next week.